gear fed out. Th thank you so much, Pete. We appreciate that, folks. Make sure you listen to that call. <laughs> you know, we're in a new studio again. <laughs> this is Eddie Adams, your host of Coach Talk Radio. And we're gonna make we're gonna make this a, a great Saturday for you. Uh, let me give out the info like we normally do, everyone. All right, the call in, Sports Talk Radio. Eight one three, two five one nine eight six seven. Eight one three, two five one nine eight six seven. That's for those folks who who want to call into the show during the course of the show. All right. My cell phone number, since since we're in a new studio, call in right now. If you call in, call in right it won't, it won't be the same. Check out the number. It won't call be in. the same. Text as immediately. As it, won't, go. it won't be the same as it used to be. <laughs> uh, okay. My cell phone number, Eddie Adams Jr., host of Porch Talk Radio. Don't disappoint me. Come on, y'all. 813 230 3312. My cell phone number. Eddie Adams Jr., 813-230-3312. Website, porchtalkradio.com. Eddie Adams, email address, Eddie, E-D-D-I-E, at porchtalkradio.com. All right, now our sponsors. We gotta, you know, we kind of get through. This, this is the work of of the show. This is how we get paid. This is how we make this magic happen every week. Is by the folks who actually help us by giving us money to do this to you for you every Saturday at ten o'clock. The Republican Executive Committee, Hillsborough County Republican Executive Committee, with us from day one actually made this possible. Todd Jones, property appraiser. OMM Inc. And our good friend John Desbrow over at Printfast. All your printing needs. And he's got about 200 cars just sitting around waiting on you to come down and take a look at them. John's number, 813-621-94. Four, four. Again, 813-621-9444. Four, four. I must tell you guys, and this is something I'm going to start all my shows off with, you got to remember, and, and this is particularly to black folks, we're not politically correct on this show, and anybody who's listened to this show before, we say black and we say white. And, and we don't want to make sure that you get misunderstood as to what I'm trying to say and who I'm talking to. So, black folks, your money has to be smart. It has to have power. It has to have purpose. And it has to have vision. We got a movement here that's happening, and we're going to change everything. We're going to change this community, and we're starting from the base. We're starting from the ground up. We're going to make some things happen. And this thing involved the entire community. So all you got to do is next time somebody asks you, have you been a part of something significant? Tell them yes. You are currently a part of something significant. We're going to change Tampa Bay for the better. Uh, uh, they're spending $13 billion in downtown Tampa, and there's no reason you should not be a part of that. Uh, we got a job fair. And I told you guys we're going to have some kind of job fair or something every month throughout the course of this year. We're going to put this whole community to work. Uh, again, even though we're targeting young black males, 24 to 45, if you show up, show up at the job fair, you're not a young black male, 24 to 45, you can still get a job. We give them white folks job, we give them Hispanic folks job, we give them women job, whoever shows up at these job fairs are getting jobs. <laughs> Now, my purpose is not for everybody to get the job. My purpose is to make sure that them folks who, you know, the, that 24-year-old, that a 35-year-old black male sleeping on his girlfriend's mother's couch gets his butt up and go get a job. So we're going to create that opportunity so he can go get a job. Now, if some of you other guys who are listening go get a job also, <laughs> that's for the better. 
It's not intended for you. You're not being targeted. See, that's what white folks tell me. They tell us the target thing. Well, we're targeting folks, but everybody else get the benefit from it. So, so that's just, uh, you know, a uh, plus one, a plus two, a plus five, a plus 100, whoever else show up to get the jobs. But the jobs are going to be there. We got, a uh, uh, matter of fact, uh, Janet Cruz is doing a job fair on July 25th. Again, her job fair probably not targeted at, at the folks that I'm targeting. But again, if you show up at the Higgins Hall on July 25th from 10 to 2, that's on Himes Avenue, 5225 North Himes Avenue, you could probably get a job there too. Hmm. So again, you see how that works? You know, different folks yeah. do job fairs. They may, you may not be the target audience, but if you show up looking for a job, guess what? They ain't say, well, we can't give you a job because you ain't who we targeted. See, that's how that whole thing worked. So we want you to show up at these job fairs. So, again, we're going to do one at the port. So we're means, you know, the, the folks here at Ports Talk Radio and, 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 and the crew of folks and volunteers that we got together because we're going to put together some more folks who are hiring people. It is so many people out there hiring. Somebody actually told me, you know, a couple weeks ago that we're going to have more jobs than we do employees here pretty soon. So uh, I'm saying to myself, I want to make sure that when that day comes, it gets getting pushed back because we got a bunch of folks who are unemployed and we're going to get them some employment. So, so, and I'm, and I'm, uh, if I'm talking Ebonics now, for some reason, I, I, I sound like I'm trying to talk extra black is because I am. So I want to make sure that we get this. No, I, can, so, I can testify for you, you are black. Yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> I want to clarify that's, that. That's not, that's not the issue. <laughs> okay, I'm just okay. clarifying. Yeah. Okay, okay, now we got some of the business out of the way, and we will get back to more business here later. But sitting here in our studio, in, in I, I want to say the EIB studio, but that's already belonged to somebody with a lot more money and a lot more <laughs> everything that we got. You know, but sitting sitting here in the Push Talk Radio studio uh, is uh, Ed Shoemaker. Ed Shoemaker, for those folks who don't know who Ed Shoemaker is, and I told you we are more political than we are anything else. And what we do is we actually have Republican candidates that you know nothing about show up in your living room or in your car seat next to you on a Saturday morning as you're going somewhere as you're doing your stuff. And we give you information about them and, and we let you know. So that's somebody else when you go down the ballot and you see this name, you at least heard of them and you heard them talk. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Ed Shoemaker introduce himself to you, tell you who he is, and tell you all in one quick sound bite why you should vote for him. Uh, uh, e either why you should vote for him or why he's so much better than all the other candidates. <laughs> okay. Ed, welcome to Ports Talk Radio. Bring What's up you this morning? Oh, it's great to be here. I love this. Nothing like getting to the grassroots. There you, go. Right. There you go. Nothing like it. Well, my name is Dr. Ed Shoemaker. I am a conservative Republican candidate for U.S. Congress, uh, Congressional District uh, 15, the uh, seat being vacated uh, by Dennis Ross, who chose uh, not to seek re-election. And any, and the rest of the gang here, um, I'm not a career politician, but let me tell you, I have been fighting for conservative values all my life, all my life. And even though I'm not a career politician, I'm a, the state, the elected state committeeman for Polk County uh, for the Republican Party of Florida, which is uh, the largest county in Congressional District uh, 15. I also serve on the uh, Second Amendment uh, Committee uh, for the Republican Party of Florida, as well as the Small Business Engagement uh, Committee. I'm a business owner. I own a, um, ment a mental health counseling uh, agency. I'm a licensed mental health counselor. Um, I have a, a doctorate in uh, psychology. And for the last 26 years, I have dedicated my life, as, uh, uh, as well as my wife, uh, improving the lives of others, uh, Eddie, through education, child welfare, uh, mental health services, and also um, uh, through our church. Why do I need to be elected? 
Why, what sets me apart? I've got that one-on-one uh, -on -one experience. I work day in and day out with families that are struggling, adoptive families uh, struggling. Um, I work in the education as a mental health counselor for Lake Wales Charter Schools. I see what the schools are going through. Let me interrupt yes. you yes. there, Ed, so we can make this thing official. For all those who do not know, Eddie Adams Jr. was born and raised in Lake Wales, Florida. So I am a Polk Countyan, you know, just for the record, so folks, <laughs> folks don't understand. Okay, continue, Ed. And this, is, and this is not his counselor. <laughs> no, I'm not his counselor. I'm not his counselor. But we need... We need somebody in Washington. We need somebody in Congress, Eddie, that understands what kids and families, people are going through day in and day out. We've got our Second Amendment rights, Eddie, are being attacked. They're being attacked by the left because of the, uh, the violence that's occurred in our public schools and all over the nation. As a mental health counselor, I'm here to say, it's not the gun, Eddie, it's not the gun. It's the mental health issues that we need to address that's causing the, uh, the emotional triggers that take place that cause these violence. We have a disconnected in us with our, with our kids today. We have a disconnected um, mindset with our kids. And, and parents need to prioritize prioritize in their children's lives God and family and make those their priorities and we've lost that we've lost that uh, the same way with education we have so much issues when it comes to education anymore that being we have devalued our children to numbers and statistics by these testing the standardized testing as a former educator, my wife's an educator, they spend practically all their time in the classroom teaching to a test. Instead of building relationships with those children, they're being devalued. And we need to make sure that we focus on relationships and let the teachers teach. Now, let, let them teach. Let me throw something in the air. Sure. I, I have a, a Facebook page that's called the American Black Conservative Movement. And, and I actually talk to folks there because they, they, they don't know I'm an individual. Many of them don't. Uh, they just think I am the movement because I respond mm -hmm. to their questions. And I, get, and I actually reply to a young lady who, who's in California and said that the principal took the the information about Frederick Douglass. They was reading mm -hmm. one, right. one one of the, one of one of the uh, classes took Frederick Douglass and and they bought the book in. They had everybody reading. Uh, one teacher did, and the principal came and took the book out of the classroom. And these folks were all in uproar and everything. But I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you what I mm -hmm. told her. Right. You, as the parent, are responsible for educating your kids. If a teacher come and take a book out of the classroom, go to Amazon, order the damn book, and continue letting your kid read the book if it's really important to you. You see, you see what I'm saying? Because somehow, because the teacher, the principal took the book out of the classroom, you know, that was like the end all to be all. No, it ain't. Uh, go to Amazon. I guarantee you any book that's in the classroom, Amazon got it. Go buy it and let your kid continue to read the book. I'm sorry. That's, yeah, that's, and let, that's, let that's your kid it read it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, and, and as parents, you know, when your child does something wrong, we need to also stand by the teachers in the class. You know, we have, we have a system now where education and schools are more worried about the data, you know, and not having a referral, not have a, having a disciplinary issue, than actually teaching the children what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. My wife, my wife, I mean, she's a perfect example of this. A child cuss out a teacher and whatever. Back in the day when we was growing up, that didn't happen, let no. me tell you. Because they had the suction board. Mm, yeah. <laughs> what happened? They had the suction board that <laughs> what? prevented that from repeatedly Oh, happening. let me tell you. <laughs> but what happens now, the parent gets called in, it's the teacher's fault. 
How dare you? How dare you chastise my child? Well, you know something? You got to teach your children. You got to teach your children. We had the electric chair too. I forgot about that one. You got to teach your children. And, and you know we're on this education. You yes. know with what happened in Parkland and so forth. And that that was just that, that was a tragedy. It was a tragedy. But but you know when it comes to the Second Amendment, too, Eddie, we're we're penalizing the wrong people when it comes to acts of violence like this. We're, you know, law-abiding citizens, you know, are paying the price for it. That's a political agenda. And, and, and long, long as the political agendas, you know, try to shape people thinking, that all that stuff is targeted. I, I mean, they, they put all the stuff out there to change your way of thinking, your way of acting, and a lot of it is targeted toward black folks. I mean, a lot of this stuff, because... You know, for all the most part, I mean, everybody on the planet, except for black folks, got a, uh, I'm, I'm going to say it, a shitload of guns in their house somewhere. You know, we the only ones that don't have a <laughs> bunch of guns. But I am not typical, because I'm going to tell you, you roll up on my house like that, thinking, <laughs> thinking that, I'm sorry, you know. You're going down. So, we got a call on the line. Uh, call it whack on the Porch Talk Radio this morning. Well, thank you, thank you. And I'm honored to be, man all these questions that I have and I hope he can help me with these questions and that'll help me make up some of the decisions that I need to make. Do you support charter schools and do you believe in voting in the party line? And at that I'll hang up and let you answer those questions. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank I, you my good friend. <laughs> I, I, I love that question. I love that question. Thank you for asking that question. Because yeah, I'm telling you Oh, I love it. I love the question because I'll tell you why. Yes, I agree with school choice. I think each and every person should have the opportunity to choose where their child goes to school at, whether it's a charter school, uh, academy, whatever. However, the one thing that we have to do is make sure that children that do not have an advocate in their home or in the community that cannot get into a charter school, cannot get into an academy. We need to make sure that we prevent them from falling through the cracks. I was one of those children way back in the day where I almost gra uh, didn't graduate high school. I graduated with a 2.11 GPA my class rank, <laughs> my class rank was 248 out of 263. Yeah, you and, and, yeah. Right. Let me tell you. And if it wasn't for the football coach and American government teacher that came up to me, and I grew up in a great family, mm -hmm. that came up to me and said, "Eddie, that's what I went by, Eddie. Yep. <laughs> Eddie, yep. if you don't do this and that, you're not going to walk from your class. Walk with your class and graduate." So now I made it my mission in life to make sure that kids don't fall through the cracks by being the lead advocate two years ago in 2014 to bring a community partnership school model to Polk County in which UCF developed. We got approval for that. I brought together people from both sides of the fence in the community. We got a community partnership school model approved by the school district. And this is all community though, right, even right. though the yeah. school district mm -hmm. is one piece of it. Right. We have to have community partners. We identified after a long process, Eagle Lake Elementary School in Polk County. Well, I'm happy to say that the community funded their end to get this up and rolling this coming school year. We just hired our community school director. And what we do is, this goes back to the Parkland incident too. We go and provide services through the community partners, the mental health services, the enrichment activities and so forth at an early age to try to prevent these incidences 
that occurred in Portland from happening later on live. And people look at me and they said, but Ed, this is an entitlement program. This is an entitlement program. No, it's not. And I'll tell you why. Because we're going in there to help families, help children, to lift them up out of poverty mm -hmm. so they can have a functional life when they become adults and resolve those issues. We're engaging families and parents in parent resources, parenting classes to help them out to get through life with their children. And there was a study done at Evans Community School in Orlando. And they did a projection because of the jobs that we'd be created for these students later on because they could get certifications in different vocations right, right. that it would save the taxpayers $47 million a year. All right. A year. Oh. So even though I agree with the school choice program with the, and everything, we have to have this type yes. of a... Education. Mm -hmm. Accountability. Accountability. Right. Education to keep the traditional students from slipping through the cracks. In fact, I was just asked to be on the national board of a newly created National Center for Community Partnership Schools. And one of my goals when I get to Congress is to expand the full service school funding where this particular money funnels down to create the community partnership schools. All right. Now, how do someone see, because, you know, this is the big nut butter way to rubber hits the road. Okay, need to tell folks how to donate to your campaign, how to contact you, how to volunteer, all those political things that candidates need to help them, help make them, uh, help them win. My website, it is stand with ed.com that's standwithed.com my telephone number and believe me as a licensed mental health counselor working in the community <laughs> you can call night or day and we'll get a call back or text me at 863-899-2162 that's 863-899-2162 and again, standwithed.com, visit me, learn about the issues and so forth, because this is about all of us. This is about right, everybody. Right, right. All right, closing remarks. What do you want to leave people, you know, believing, thinking, hearing from Ed Shoemaker? Again, conservative Republican candidate. I'm not a career politician. However, I've been fighting for conservative values all my life, as well as everyone. I work with everyone. We need to unite together to make America first and keep it great like Donald Trump has made it. Our President Trump is working for everybody, and we need to come together and make this great again and make America first. All right. Thank you. Thank you for visiting us on Porch Talk Radio. And uh, and guys, we're going to go here in a minute to on this day. I know you guys are waiting for that. Show. Absolutely. So, so, so this is how we do it. So so thanks, Ed. Thanks a lot, Eddie. I appreciate it. And God bless everybody out there. God bless there. America. God bless America. All right. Thank you. All right. For, I know you guys have been sitting around waiting, as you always do, every morning for on this day in history all right on this day july 7th let me go ahead and get this in here before i murder it or screw it up or whatever you, should, Eddie, go it, for you it. know just go i would like to thank miss mary glover for my wife sylvia who if i give her age a I give her a date of her birth, then that will make stuff bad for me when I get home. So you have to go home eventually. So, so I'm going to say this is my wife's birthday. So, oh, happy birthday. So, so, what a wonderful so, so, lady. So, so, so thank, nice you, you. thank you, Sylvia. Uh, wonderful lady. For, for, for the time and the energy and allow me to do the things that I do. And Must she be do, the medication. She's she, a wonderful she, lady. She do allow Put me up to with do you, this. I'll tell you what. I could not do this without her. Thank you. Love you.
All right, now for the rest of the world. <laughs> On July 7th, 1754, King's College opened in New York City. It was renamed Columbia College 30 years later. On this day, July 7th, 1930, construction began on the Hoover Dam. Later, I'm, well, I blew that. Construction began on the Boulder Dam, later Hoover Dam over the Colorado River. Uh, I just threw that up real bad. Anyway, moving forward, 1981. July 7th, U.S. President Ronald Reagan announced that he was nominating Arizona Judge Sandra Day O'Connor to become the first female justice on the U.S. Supreme Court. And it looked like we may get another female on the U.S. Supreme Court. So She's you got know, some great credentials. Well, well, I'm just saying, you know, she's the front runner from what from, from everybody keep telling me. She's on so, the N3. Did you hear about that? So, so, uh, yeah, uh, so so anyway, we may get another female on the Supreme Court. Which would be great, actually, because what we don't have is we don't have a female constitutionalist. All right. Oh, right now, the only... That's a bad word. Well, be careful. Well, the only, because the only female representation is on the left on, on the court. Extreme so, left. So the, so the idea is that if you're a female on the court, you're going to be leftist. So it's nice, it'd, be, it'd be great to have somebody who is a, con, a female constitutionalist. Well, she's a, she's a pro-life... And she has seven kids. So she's so. obviously pro life. And <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> prolific. <laughs> yeah, prolific. All right, yeah. let me continue. Slow that thing down. Okay. <laughs> On this day, 1987, public testimony at the Iran Contra hearings began. I know everybody remember those. And last but not least, on this date in 1994, Amazon. Dot com Inc. was founded in Seattle, Washington under the name Catabra. Catabra, and I would have never put the two together, but Amazon being in, being in Seattle, the same place where Starbucks. Yep. So I'm just thinking out of Seattle, boy, stuff was happening back then. Mm -hmm. It was most of us like some mega, you know, Western their, something, you know. And they're doing their best to run them out, too. Well, you, yeah, they, they are. They are not. And, and again, each, each one of these candidates I bring to you are probably people, like I said at the beginning of the process, you probably have not heard of them uh, in the past. And, and now you just got another candidate when you go down your ballot to see see a name you may recognize or somebody you may heard. Because had it not been for this show... You probably would not know other than Rick Scott and 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 Adam, Adam Putnam. Putnam you like know most the of the other candidates that's running for some of these other slots. And and again, my my whole purpose <clears throat> here is to bring you information and give you another point of view. And even my point of view, more often than not, people used to argue with and disagree with. And over time. You know, they keep trying to tell me that I have changed, but I can show you and tell you from shows we did, you know, seven, eight years ago. I'm still the same person. It's just that now you've heard it, you internalized it, and a lot of the things that, that were my ideas are now yours. So so this community is coming 180 degrees. For the uh, better. Toward, toward, toward at, least, at least now you got the information. See, if, if you only get one side of the news, you only get one opinion, you only get one idea, and, and you're not a person that works hard, I ain't going to say you're lazy, but if you're not a person that formulates their own idea or their own opinion, you know, I, I at least give you another side and another way to see a lot of the stuff that you would never come across any other way because you don't traditionally listen to conservative radio. So, again, no. me being the only... You know, this being the only conservative radio in the area, we happen to be the number one show on WTMP at this time. You know, that gives us an opportunity to to give you some other thoughts. And that way, when you're having debates, you actually know some of what the other side is saying and thinking and all that kind of good stuff. Because anybody who know me, you know, I do appreciate this because this is what it's all about. It's about us moving this thing forward together. 
And again, getting people information, the big deal is if you don't know, you don't know. And when you're out there behind that voting booth, people just mark stuff at random. I, unfortunately, have been one of those in the past before I knew what I know now. to go, wait a minute, this doesn't quite go along with what I believe in. So the fact that we keep bringing you guys information and all your processing for yourself, you're thinking about it, you're going, yes, no, heck no. Well, that's a great idea. Folks, that's what it's all about. Letting you think for yourself, make your own decisions, and go forward. Eddie, I've known him for all these years, and he's been right down the middle of the road on a majority of this stuff. Occasionally he'll chase bunnies, but uh, just back to the reality of just bringing you guys information, you decide for yourself, and that's what we want to do. Willie, what do you think? Well, you know, it's interesting. You know what, and, and, and you're right. But, you know, it's interesting that we can do this um, every Saturday uh, and, and, and bring you an, another, another perspective. And I think, Eddie, what, what you're seeing is what we've said all along. We're really not that far apart. The idea is, yes, uh, you know what, two of us have had ours behind our names of political campaigns. Um, but when we talk about where we live, and the people that we, our, our family and our friends, we're really on, and on, on real ideas, the stuff that's really, really important, we're really not that far apart at all. And we're trying to head the same direction. We want to see our urban community thrive mm -hmm. because we know that everything that it needs to thrive is already there. It doesn't need a bunch of outside influences. It doesn't need a bunch of strings from places far away, people that we don't know. We have enough people right here, right here, to make our community um, uh, uh, the show place that it should, the show place that it should be. We have, a, we have enough people who are smart enough. We have people who will work hard enough. Why? Because we've already seen them work. Um, so we're really not that far, really not that far away. So, and I think that that's what people are starting to see. That you know, when they hear the word Republican or conservative. It's like they want to get the you know when they, they want to get the cross out and you know and oh, no you know what but that's not but but what they're what they're finding out is that we haven't changed is that that's not necessary we're not the caricature that media would have have you believe that we are 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 people who are who are our quote enemies end quote or would believe we would be, have you believe that we are we, we're actually I don't know see. Eddie's from Lake Wales. I grew up in I grew up in Jackson Heights. I, like I tell people all the time, I'm from here. I'm from here. I went to Jackson Heights Elementary School, which is gone, um, and I lived in the Ville. So <laughs> I'm from here. I'm not from any, I'm not from anywhere else. The village. The Ville. <laughs> no, no. People who ain't from ain't here call it the village. It's the Ville. I grew up in the Ville. You know, I don't know what the Ville is. You know. What? And the Ville Billion being overrun with white folks right now. Part, part of the time on 88th part of the time on 88th Street, the other part on Dally Avenue. Went to Progress, Progress Village Elementary School. My principal was Sweet Tricks Williams. Wow. Sweet Tricks. Mm. A black woman named Sweet Tricks. Gotta love that. Yeah. As a principal. That's special. I thought we were good because we had Batman and Robin when I was in, when, when that was, that was I was a, in elementary school. That wasn't her nickname. Yeah. That was her name. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's different. That's different. We had Batman and Robin, the principal and the vice principal. Oh, man. No, that wasn't her nickname. That was her name. All right. <laughs> so I'm from. So I'm from here. So uh, we're not that far on on most things that are important. We're quite frankly not that far apart. Well, let okay. Let's. But well, well, what I really want to do is I want to give a hearty thank you. To all the people who participated, who helped, who showed up, who sponsored, uh, who was involved with the uh, sixth annual Juneteenth Award luncheon, which was an event we had uh, two weeks ago, and 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 last Saturday was the end of Juneteenth the month, uh, which was put on by the Tampa Bay Juneteenth Coalition which did a great job of, of doing a whole bunch of events, making June 2018 an excellent month. And I've already put on my calendar next year, uh, the awards banquet will be on June 21st, uh, 2019. So, I mean, we, we, we like the gas gorilla. We start working on next year. You know, as soon as the events over, we just start working for next year. But I think so, it better. So we're going we gonna to make, make it do that. We're going to make it do what it do. <laughs> and, and, and I'm going to tell you guys again, um, 
this is about this is about politics. So I'm gonna make a bunch of folks mad. So let me go ahead Brilliant. and get, get let me go ahead and get that out of the way. There is an organization that's national, and it's really a really conversation we had this morning uh, in the Saturday morning breakfast group about uh, a, a a plan not to turn black folks into Republicans. And I told you from day one, that's not why we are here. Not at all. But there is a plan, and, and, and black Republicans didn't start it. Matter of fact, he was a gay, white, brutician, actor, person that has started something called Hashtag Walk Away. And what he's doing, he is trying, and he's got over 60-something thousand folks on a Facebook page where he's saying walk away from the Democratic Party mm -hmm. uh, because they're they nuts. Because their their whole political agenda is hate Trump. Ha hashtag hate Trump. They have nothing else to offer. Hashtag uh, you know millions and millions of black families been separated for years and years and years. I mean, so so if it's about separating of family members, not just immigrants, uh, 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 illegals or something. You got plenty of black folks. I'm just saying black folks. You know, you got, all you got to look at, look around your whole, whole your own community. Uh, and do you have the, the luxury to say, okay, but well, we're concerned about all these other folks being separated. Look at your families. Look mm -hmm. at your community. Look, 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 look at, look at our, our, our folks and how many have been separated because half of the folks are in jail, uh, half of the folks are here, half of the folks are there. I mean, we got that problem here. For them to take two or three thousand, or even twenty thousand folks who and, and say, "Okay, we're gonna make a national camp." That's what the Democratic Party has done. That's their focus nationally on on the immigrant and and families being separated and and hate Trump. Again, you got to have more than that. I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> serious. I'm serious. It, it's the 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 bleeding black folks on the edges of the Democratic Party are walking away. And now you got somebody who starts a group, a, a young, you know, somewhat, I'm tell you what, he was a liberal white guy, beautician. Mm -hmm. And he said, and he has started this whole thing called hashtag walk away. And then if you know anything about some of these movements, it's as good as anything else they come up with. Uh, and, and it's creative. And, and it's got a couple of, like I say, 40, 50,000 folks nationally walking away from the Democratic Party. You don't have to vote Republican. I'm just telling and you. And the minorities uh, are doing uh, it in uh, really uh, large uh, numbers, uh, blacks uh, and Hispanics. Yeah, yeah, uh, they're saying they're done with this hate. Yeah, I'm, I'm, le I'm, I'm, letting, I'm letting the cat out the bag. I'm telling you, you don't have to vote Republican for Republicans to win. If you got enough blacks and Hispanics who decide not to vote Democrat, guess what? Boom, it's over. And and, and, I'm, and I'm putting it out there so so you guys know. So so it is a it is a strategy. It is part of a of a national platform that you need to tell. You need to contact your people and say, okay, we got to get something to talk about other than hate Trump. Again, anything based on hate. I'm just saying for you folks who are in the church, you understand. You're gonna base your whole perspective and base the whole campaign on hating somebody. You're going to fall short. I'm just going to tell you. Call her whack in the Porch Talk Radio uh, this Saturday morning. I'm getting all hyped up here because I'm just trying to put the information out there. What say you? Uh, good morning. Yes. yes, yes. I, I think you all have a short memory. You remember the Republican Party, all they were about is hating uh, President Obama and not supporting him. You all seem to think, all, when you all talk, you seem to think like it's... Hmm. The Republican Party is the party you need to be in, and they all for you. They're not for you either. I don't see where either party would be something ideal for black people. But the Republican, excuse, the Republican Party definitely is not the one. Did you not but hear me? Did you not? Excuse me. Did you not hear me say we're not here trying to re recruit for the Republican Party? I've said that probably ever since I've been on this show. We're not recruiters for the Republican Party. I've always said that. I'm still saying that. I just want to make sure people don't confuse that, that somehow we're sitting here. I'm just giving you information, which is what I just told the last call. I'm giving you information. You take it and do what you want with it. You know yeah, what? I hear you say that all the time. I'm not taking that away from you. But what I'm saying is when you speak, the, well, you speak as if the Republican Party is the one. 
the Republican Party is the ideal party that you need to be in, whether you say it uh, like that or not. That's what comes across. Well, let me because the Republican let Party is let not me help the you. black people either, and they are very the nasty, hateful, and dirty, and all kind of things. The things they get away with, President Obama would have never gotten away with. So don't try to put them up like they are so great. I, 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 I didn't even mention Obama's name. I have never mention Obama's name unless incited by someone calling in. Again, I don't do that. See, you keep trying to make me somebody who I am not. I'm not recruiting for the Republican Party, and I'm not talking about anything Obama did or did not do. I'm just saying if you got a philosophy and you got a campaign and your national thing is hate, you're going to catch hell trying to trying to win with that philosophy. I just think, think there's a, a godly thing about trying to, to push hate. Period. I don't care who's doing it. Well, you know what? And, 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 and the caller has dropped. And I hope she's still listening. What Eddie's saying about this this method of um, of campaigning, this strategy, that it failed, and you saw it fail in 2012, when President Obama, who had basically his numbers, uh, the, the the matrix of, of a sitting president, had never been reelected with such numbers. The the the, the campaign or the strategy. Uh, everything Obama did was bad was a failure. Yes, it was. It was a dismal failure, and to see, and and, and, and to see anybody on the left go down the same path, trying to repeat something. I mean, it's the same so, path. Yeah. We've already seen it, you know. And, and if I was advising uh, who's ever in charge of the Democrat Party is now, and said, you know what, Republicans tried that in 2012, and what happened? They they got their heads handed to them. They get their heads handed to them, so it's the strategy that we're talking about that is a failed strategy, a failed strategy of uh, of, of taking disagreement hate. and raising it to the level of hate. Just because we disagree doesn't mean I hate you. Doesn't just because we disagree on a, a, a policy doesn't mean that I'm a terrible that you're a terrible person or I'm a terrible person. But what Eddie's saying is that that strategy. We saw it fail. We yeah. saw the Democrats saw I mean, the Republicans saw it fail in 2012. When 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 President Obama got reelected, and see the, the other thing you got to take into consideration too, what we doing here on this show is trying to build and move and homogenize a community to look out and be dependent upon itself. I, I want you guys to be self-sufficient. That's why we're trying to do the Black Credit Union. That's why we're trying to get folks jobs so you have your own money. Put, I'm going to tell you something. A person feels bad when they have no money. I don't care who the hell you are. If you ain't got no money in your pocket, especially men, you know, and you got to ask somebody for something and you're always dependent upon something, you know, that makes you feel less than a person. I'm talking about feeling. And, and it don't matter whether you're Democrat, Republican, or Independent. So what we're trying to do primarily on this show, this happened to be a political show where I will give you the other side from time to time and you could take it or believe it or not believe it. But I'm going to tell you something that's hard to not believe is your own eyes and your own feeling. And, and, and when, you, when you come home and, and everybody's looking up at you uh, and, and they're hungry. Uh, I mean, so, you know, I think a position is we trying to give folks jobs every show at some point in time. You hear me talking about go to a job fair. Go do better by your family for yourself. And I'm telling you something else. You can say what you want. But there's more black folks working right now than ever in the history of this country other than slavery. I'm just saying. And, and the person that did it, I ain't telling you like Donald Trump. Like, don't give a crap whether you like Donald Trump or not. I'm just talking about right now stuff for your family which is most people's primary purpose is to feel good and have their family do well. Now you're doing better than you ever done before, and you and, and you're gonna say, "Well, it's Donald Trump that did." I don't give a crap who done it. If you can make my family feel better and do better uh, about itself and be more self-sufficient, hey, I, you ain't gotta be a brain surgeon to figure that out. And and because of this hate thing, you hate him anyway. I don't give a crap. Uh, feed your family, do well, educate your kids. You know, make make a make a place for yourself. That's what we're trying to talk about here. And we talk about not have somebody else do it, not beg folks for it, but do it your darn self. Okay, <laughs> call on, let, let me let me get the call on the line. Uh, call it welcome to Porch Talk Radio. What say you this morning? Then we we'll get back to Gabriel. Yeah, how you doing, Mr. Adams? Uh, you doing a good job. Okay, you should have asked the lady because I would have asked I asked black folks all the time. If President Obama did that much for black folks, why 
about it, then he talk about reparations before he left off. Everybody, everybody, everybody say, well, hey, you know, he couldn't do all this. He did what he wanted to do. He got his agenda over. I voted for him the first time, but that second time I wasn't falling for that game. You know, and this here, uh, uh, back in the days of civil rights, Lillard B. Johnson told Dr. King, said, look here, I know what black America needs, but you make me do it. Listen here, if black folks come together on one accord and go to Donald Trump, say, listen here, a million, two, three, four million strong right on Washington. He'll do, he'll do some things for black folks. That's all I got to say. Well, thank you, Carla. Gabriel. Well, and it's just an understanding. Right now, what we see in the media constantly, 24-7, just hate towards conservatives, towards Trump's cabinet. That never happened with Obama. That was never allowed with Obama to happen. For And Maxine Waters herself, who's the face of the Democratic Socialist Party, is what they're calling themselves now. I just heard that last week. The guy that's running called it the Democratic Socialist Parties. So you yellow dog Democrats out there, God bless you. We need your votes. But after it's all said and done, folks, if you look at where all the hate is coming from, it's all the wackos. And I know there's a lot of very good people that listen to this show that ain't that kind of people. And then you start looking at, do I want to continue that hate? No, they don't. We got some good people that listen to the show. And I know for them to think, I don't want to promote that. I don't want that in my family. I want what's right for America. And that's it. It has nothing to do with it. I don't care which party it is. What's right for America? That hateful stuff that's going on, that lady that climbed up the... Uh, that liberty thing, she came from a country that had 45,000 people a month dying because of famine, because of disease, all that bad, and yet she's going to complain about us. Yeah, right. Go back to your third world. Mm. Well, 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 again, let, 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 let me do this so, so, <laughs> the, so that we don't get so far off the track. People gonna start jumping off buildings because they don't, they don't build this thing up. It's just hate, hate. Because, hey. because come Monday, come Monday, the person that everybody hates gonna appoint somebody else to the Supreme Court. That's his job. Election have consequences. Mm -hmm. And if you keep going, Obama could have done this. And if you keep going in 2020, Trump is gonna win again because again because 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 again you can't win a campaign. National, the hate is gonna happen. National campaign with hate. So he'll win again. He may be able to point four. I mean, before before it's over with. Supreme Court justices, and you never you never get back to where you was. So again, if that's all it is, you, you got to get some substance in your life, and it can't be hate, and it can't be separation of kids and stuff because they've been separating you from your kids, you know, since you, since since they first brought you off the ship. So again, you know, this is this is what I need people to understand. Don't follow the the the, the misinformation. Uh, uh, of what's out there, you know. Sometimes you gotta think for yourself. Mm -hmm. Call up, wipe the porch, talk the radio. This is Eddie Adams Jr. trying to trying to get some stuff off his chest <laughs> and and establish some 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 bonds with the community. Yeah, what Eddie, what say you? Can, yes. Can, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to wanted to say that um, I'm I'm uh, one of the people who who has walked away from the Democratic Party and uh. You know, I, I did it uh, after uh, the first uh, uh, election of Obama. I mean, I was hoping to, when we he got in there, he was going to be like this really, uh, you know, kick butt kind of black guy and yell at all these old white guys and and all this. And he just turned out to be a big mess. And so I voted Green Party after that. And you know, I I, I didn't well, come over to your side, but I sure left the Democratic Party. Yeah, and and that's what this. And again, that's a new strategy because really. This this young guy, this young gay guy, white liberal uh, guy, started this because he said that he had expectations of the Democratic Party and they did not meet them, and and he didn't want to become a Republican, but he started a national campaign to tell minorities of all shapes, forms, colors, whatever, to walk away from the Democratic Party, and unless the Democratic Party Changes and, mm -hmm. and gets some yeah. some 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 points to that people can follow. Other than hate, uh, the party's gonna catch hell. They're gonna get a butt kicking here in a little while. All right, you hear? You still there? We have a new caller. All right, new caller. What say you? Yeah, you cut me off before, but I want to see uh, the caller. Just, the, the caller that just called said he wants to the the party so the president Obama wouldn't come and kick butt to the right. That is so silly. That's not what he's doing. That's what they expect. 
and by race, he's biracial for one thing, but they look at him as a black man. That's what they said President Obama could be like. Some foolishness, but he wasn't. And he couldn't get things passed because of the Republicans. Right. And you all know that. So why would you okay, think okay, the Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me explain something to you. Gay folks came out of the closet because our president, Barack Obama, made it sensible that they can take leaps and bounds and steps ahead of where they would have been because he was president. He could have did the same thing for blacks had he changed and mm -hmm. made that one of his major agenda. He mm -hmm. chose not to, and nothing you say, anybody else say, gonna make a difference because the gay folks are where they are today because Barack Obama was president, not because of anything else. And he could have did something more for black folk had he chose to. He chose not to, and you can't cover that up, and you can't make it because it's already the past. And in the first, and in the first term, uh, President Obama had a had, had a, a, a supermajority. He had the House and the Senate full of Democrats, and that's how they passed the Affordable Care Act. They passed it without one single Republican vote. They could have done anything they wanted to, and, and this is not my opinion, and I don't care one way or the other. The idea is that, that the numbers say so. The numbers say they could have done anything they wanted to do, anything they wanted to do at all. But they, I mean, there was stuff that they, they had on their agenda, on their plan to do, and that's what they, and that's what they got accomplished. Um, other stuff, not so much, because they chose to. And and and, and again, you can you can like uh, the Affordable Care Act. I won't call it the other name. I never do. <laughs> um, if you want to, if you think it's a good idea or a bad idea. But the fact is, in, their, in that first term, they had the numbers. Yes, there was disagreement, but it didn't matter. It's like having children in your house who do who who don't want to take a bath. The adults who are bigger and stronger make them take a bath. They had more people on their side to vote. So that had nothing to do with Republicans. They could blame the tea, they blamed the Tea Party, mm -hmm. they blamed everybody and their mama on why stuff didn't get done, but it was the dissension inside their own party, which we are seeing now. Right. Yeah. That was the problem. And, 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 and again, uh, I want to bring you some information. Uh, July 1st, we had a black airline that start flying out of Tampa St. Pete Airport. That's over in St. Petersburg, but the airport is called the Tampa St. Pete Air, Air, Airport. And Ashley Air and Travel. The young man's name is John Ashley. He was on this show. He'll be, young. He'll be back on this show again within the next couple of weeks because <clears throat> he's opening up, talking about jobs, he's opening up a communication center where he will take a call center where where he will actually be doing business for his industry for his airline and, and, and for, for the other entities that's involved he will be doing charter flights he will be doing regular flights uh, and again this is something he has the only black airline in the country and it's only been two so again, part of this technology, part of what we're doing, part of this community, this guy is 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 moving an uh, industry where he may have a couple hundred employees in Tampa Bay. That's what I'm talking about. That's how we're gonna move this thing forward. We're not gonna get caught up on hate. That's why I don't talk politics that often, even though it's a political show, because you'll miss all the good stuff. By, by, by the five or ten minutes of bad stuff that show up on the air. So again, I very seldom try to bring that up because it's easy to get lost in the minutiae of, of negative things. Uh, I want to get caught up in the minutiae of positive things. And we're going to do some positive things for this community. We are a part of positive things happening here in Tampa Bay. I'm talking about Porch Talk Radio. So Porch Talk Radio Eddie Adams and the gang here, Willie and Gabriel and Tim, we're all doing this, and we started talking about this uh, last year, and we're getting going where we need to get. I'm just saying, and I say it like that for a reason. So, so, so come next month or the following month or the following month, when we get ready to actually open up the Black Credit Union and get you guys uh, reinvesting in yourselves, which is, which is my concern and my place, is what we're going to be doing. So I look forward to that time. I look forward to that date. And I look forward to that opportunity. All right, listen, um, 
I know we've stirred up a, a nest a little bit today. And, it needs to be. And that wasn't and that wasn't really the purpose. I, I think the idea is what, what Eddie was saying was correct that the the path that the Democrat Party is on is a path that I don't think is going to benefit them. And if it doesn't benefit them, it won't benefit any of the people who are supporting them. So, mm -hmm. so all all we're saying <clears throat> is take a strong look at who you associate with and what and what they are saying. And if you do that, you can think for yourself, you can make a decision, and then you can make the best decision for your family and your future. That's it. With all that said, folks, God bless America. We live in a great place. I would not want to be anywhere else at this point in time. This is the best place to be. You are in the right place. You got the right show on. Thank you all. God bless you. And see you next week. Bye-bye. Boom.